going to start this uh, little video series of fixing up this old uh, 1966 Triumph. It's a um, 1966 frame with a 1973 um, T140 motor. It's the 750. And as you can see, I've already like, torn half of it apart because that's because I recorded the intro and everything when we first started ripping into this thing. And then I realized like the fan or like the heating fan was on. And so you could barely hear what I was saying. And so I record the intro all over again. And basically all it came with was the frame, the forks, tires, motor, and a little bit of elect electric, electronics, electrical stuff. Um, it came with some wiring and stuff, but it was all pretty much shot. And the frame is in pretty decent shape. It came already stripped down to the bare metal. And so since then it's kind of, after touching it a few times here and there, it's kind of got some surface rust on it. And then this hardtail, I'm not sure how sturdy this hardtail is. It's, it's a little suspect. It's, it's kind of some thinner tubing and got some weird angles in it and some weird cuts in it. So I might end up doing a different hardtail. Um, I might buy one from like Lowbrow Customs and because um, they have some that's pre-built. It's just a bolt-on just like this guy is. And as for the, the plan for the bike, I think I'm kind of leaning towards doing like a really blacked out um, bobber. I really like the blacked out bobbers because they're, they're really sleek and simple. Um, but one thing that always kind of drives me nuts about those type of builds are like, you always get like little teeny accents of chrome here and there that kind of distract from it. So I'm going to try to do a build where everything's just completely blacked out. Like every, all, all the way down to like every little um, engine bolt and nut and everything. I might, one, another reason I'm kind of leaning towards getting a different hardtail is because this hardtail is super short and I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy, I'm, I'm 6'4", and so I kind of get squished up on this particular frame. Um, and I also, I think we're gonna completely rebuild the entire engine and do the entire engine black too. And some Triumph people might hate that, but I think it'll look really cool. And I'm gonna be splitting the cases anyway, so why not like do something really cool with it? And also it'll be a really good way for me to start trying some new stuff. Cause I've, I've always wanted to like get like an at home powder coating system and try it out and see how well you can do at home with the powder coating. I've always wanted to like try some vapor blasting stuff. I've always wanted to um, rebuild a complete engine from like from the ground bottom all the way up. Cause I've rebuilt a few other motorcycles before. I've done some like GS 450s with a complete engine rebuild, a couple of Yamahas, but all those were like on a college student budget and I wasn't able to afford brand new everything on all the different parts. And so with this build, um, because it's a Triumph and it holds its value so well, I'm not as hesitant to put some money into it because I know that I have the possibility of at least breaking even at the end of the day with all the different parts and stuff I put into it. So let's do it. end we found some problems that we're gonna have to deal with the first one and the most annoying one is there is just this red gasket maker everywhere we ever rebuilt this engine last time it was fairly liberal with the amount of gas gasket maker they put on everything like it's it's on the valve springs it's inside every little hole and crevice and it's overflowed into everything and you can just find these little teeny flakes of red junk everywhere 
Uh, that's not a big problem. We'll clean that all out when we start redoing the engine, but it's literally on everything. It's crazy. Um, next issue, these cylinders, um, I think we're gonna have to, to bore those out. Um, the pistons have been scarred up pretty bad. I don't know if it's because of the low oil uh, or just some bad tolerances and they're banging around inside the cylinders or what. And I think one of the reasons that it was beat up inside of there is because the tappets, they were placed facing the wrong way so they weren't receiving oil. There's some missing parts here and there like on some of these these uh, valve covers, they're missing some of these little these uh, bolt inserts and they're missing nuts and stuff. But other than that, like you got like average carbon buildup, a little bit of wear on some of the wear items like the the valves are a little worn out, but like it's nothing crazy. So I think this is gonna be a pretty straightforward build. I don't think we're gonna have to spend tons of money on anything like ridiculous. I think everything's pretty much here and I think we're good to go. Okay, that finishes up the teardown as far as we can get so far. Uh, we need some more tools that we ordered off of Lowbrow Custom to pull off some of these other parts that you can't really do without tools. So now we're just waiting for those to come. They should be here pretty soon. So this is gonna be kind of a build series. So we're gonna have like um, a bunch of different videos doing certain parts on the motorcycle. And then we'll probably also do like little skill videos. So like when we start powder coating stuff. I think we're gonna just gonna do like a general video on how to powder coat at home while we try it out and experiment on it. Because like I'm not a professional motorcycle builder. I don't know 100% what I'm doing. I've like rebuilt a few motorcycles here and there, but I'm, I'm not professional. So as I'm learning this, hopefully you guys will be learning along with me. And instead of you guys going and blowing a bunch of money on stuff, I'll blow the money on a bunch of stuff. And then you can learn from my mistakes and learn from, uh, hopefully my successes too. So that's it for now. But I've been my lucky charms.